Hello, it's Alden. Here are two ways you can build 3D assets using photos or video that you take out in the world. I'm gonna walk you through how I used photos from the beach to build this environment. There's a scene in my film where the characters look out at this overlook in this indoor city. And I knew I wanted this kind of balcony with this area that jutted out. And I had this 3D scan of this area on Roosevelt Island, but it just wasn't working. And so I was kind of procrastinating doing this scene. And then I ended up going to Venice Beach in LA and I saw the pier and thought that is exactly what I want that overlook to look like. So here's how you can go to a, any location you want and end up with a 3D model you can use in your 3D scenes. Also, if you want these balcony assets, they are available on my Patreon. There are two ways to build a 3D asset like this. One is to use an app like Polycam and actually get the 3D scan. The other way is to use photographs and build 3D models and project that photography onto a 3D model. So because I couldn't, you know, walk 360 around all of the balconies on this pier, I decided to do the photo version. So I took a bunch of photos and one of the first steps is to make sure everything is flush and square and aligned to X and Y axes, similar to how a texture would be if you were downloading from textures.com. So I do that in Photoshop. If you go into the camera raw filter, you can go into geometry over here, uh, choose this option where you can draw your X and Y axes. And so you find uh, your lines there, vertical and horizontal, uh, and you can line everything up. And that's nice because when you're in Blender and you're doing like a loop cut, uh, everything is aligned nicely. The next step is to go into Blender and import those images as images as planes. Then you can start loop cutting and extruding forward and backwards to give this photograph some 3D geometry. There are some irregular shapes within them and you can use the knife tool, but once you use the knife tool, uh, suddenly you won't be able to make some loop cuts. So uh, make all your loop cuts first. Uh, bevel what you need to bevel and then use your knife tool last for those, you know, tricky little situations. But I did that for all of these images of the balconies and uh, then just kind of like rotated and duplicated to create a full square version of this. And here it is in action. So this is the scene where I have two characters. They were shot on green screen. So this is them as a PNG sequence image as planes. And I'm just bringing in the balcony. I'm bringing in the kind of long wall stretch and I am creating, I'd kind of blocked out what I wanted already using other assets. So some of the concrete I think was maybe from an Ian Hubert asset pack. Some elements were 3D scans that I had done, uh, but I'm just gonna replace it all with these Venice Beach scans because uh, this is the, the actual look that I wanted. Um, so I'm just gonna go through and line everything up and just make sure um, when you're looking at this, it does look like one big balcony. And so that means also kind of doing some additional extrusions, getting rid of part of the balcony itself, and just making sure that, you know, when you have these 3D models like this, especially things that you build yourself, it can be really helpful just to drag and drop, but sometimes uh, don't be afraid to make more adjustments as you need. Another little step that I'm taking is adding this railing. So this red railing came from 3D scans of Roosevelt Island, where a lot of my 3D environments for this film come from. And I'm adding it here because if you're ever doing something like this, where you're working on a film project and you have a bunch of different environments, there are things like this that are going to tie everything together visually. So if this were all one structure, there would be kind of repeated visual elements and this red railing is what it is in this film. Whatever that visual element is in your world that you're building, be sure to add those little details back throughout your scenes just to uh, give it some visual consistency. Make your railing using a solid, do the loop cuts that you wanna do, select everything and delete everything but the edges. And then you can convert just those edges into curves by right clicking and then you can add some depth to that curve and that's gonna give you the cylinder. So everywhere you had an edge in your solid becomes a railing. And now we have this kind of custom railing shape that fits to our geometry and um, I think looks nice within the scene.
I tend to do a lot of trial and error when I'm building 3D environments like this. I use all of the 3D scans and assets that I have for the project, also additional elements here and there. But one thing that's important, and uh, for this scene, it's all green screen, is to set up cameras of all of your coverage for the scene because the most important elements of the scene are what's in camera. So you could spend hours and hours detailing all of these elements of your 3D environment, but it might not end up being in the shot. So knowing where your cameras are, what your coverage is, it's kind of actually the similar, the same principle as shooting anything live action, which is that you only need to art what's in camera. And the same goes here. And especially if you know your depth of field is going to be shallow. So this was, you know, fairly close up on these two actors and the background's going to be a little bit blurry. Um, that's a little more forgiving for whatever is in that uh, background. And I do that by, uh, I have a camera report that has what lens was on each angle. And then I use a PNG image, just as one transparent image of each shot and set it to the background for that camera. The other thing that I'll do is I'll take a 3D model of a person and put them where uh, these actors would be in real life and sort of line everything up so that that camera is in a position where I'm looking at this 3D model of two people and it's more or less the same. You can adjust anything you need, of course, uh, but as a general reference point, starting point, that's what I tend to do. The other way you can create a 3D model is using something like polycam and polycam now has the cool feature where you can upload images from the desktop portal you don't have to use just the app and so here's a video i took of this building in new york city i really liked that it had this concrete brutalist architecture but it felt like a 3D model to me in real life where it was like, oh, something happened with your mesh there. Um, so I took a video walking around it. I brought that into an edit software and just time ramped it because you can only upload 250 images to polycam. So I made it so it was 250 images long, uh, rendered out an image sequence, uploaded that to polycam, and then downloaded that model. You of course can download this on my Patreon as well. This is the final shot. Uh, it's this big long shot that kind of starts looking lower in this tower, moving up past this sign, and then seeing the two actors there. But yeah, it's pretty cool to be able to look out at the world and see something, take pictures of it or video of it, and then end up with a 3D model that you can bring into your film projects. And uh, hopefully this is uh, helpful. If you want these assets, uh, they're on my Patreon, and there are gonna be more 3D scans on the way. The more people that are interested, the more uh, time I can spend uh, providing that stuff for you.